Welcome to Oddball. I'm Charlotte Wilder here in New York City. Amin, you are there in Miami. Uh, we have a packed show for everybody today. We have to talk about Embiid coming back. We've got a new segment oh, Char- we're doing. Charlotte, hold on, Charlotte. I'm, I'm hearing there's breaking news. There's like, I'm being handed a report right now. What? Oh, my. In several cities across the NBA, the playoffs have started. The playoffs have started. It started in Golden State last night. It started in Miami last night. It started in Denver. It's happening all over the country, Charlotte. Playoff pandemonium across the NBA. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, the playoffs did not start last night. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Did you watch Heat Knicks? Yes, yes. But what is it? Where are you getting this information? Did you make this up? I'm not making this up at all. Like, uh, the reports are right here. Hold on. Let me grab that sheet. All right, so it started actually in Philadelphia last night where the Oklahoma City Thunder played the Sixers, and Joel Embiid came back, leading them to a go-ahead win. He scored 10 points in the fourth quarter, including eight trips to the free throw line. Perfect there. This is a huge game because the Thunder are chasing the number one seed in the West, and meanwhile, the Sixers are trying to stay keep pace with the Miami Heat. This was a playoff-like atmosphere in a playoff-like game, Charlotte Wilder. Back to you. Even though the Thunder were missing Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jalen Williams, even though they were out, even though Tyrese Maxey was was not playing. Next man up mentality, Charlotte. It's the playoffs. Okay. Um. All right. Well, should we see what Emb- Embiid well, said about this? He he seemed pretty tired. I could tell you why he was tired because it was a playoff game, playoff intensity, playoff stakes. It all, had it all, and he showed up and stood and delivered. And that's what guys do. That's what stars do in the playoffs. Do they do, you, do? Do you think? Do you think this was a playoff game? Look, uh, look. Sometimes teams don't show up in the playoffs. We've seen it time and time again. Hey, your favorite team, the Boston Celtics, didn't show up in Game Seven. How different is that? Back to you, Charlotte. It's low-hanging fruit. That's lazy. That's lazy broadcasting. I mean, Embiid was listed as injured in this playoff game uh, all day. He was listed out until five forty-nine p.m. And then mm-hmm. he was upgraded to available just an hour later. Yep. And some people are saying that he, he only decided to play when he saw that Shea and Jalen Williams were were sitting out. Is there no, any sh- truth to that? No, Charles, this is this is purely gamesmanship. This happens in the playoffs all the time. You want to keep your opponent on their toes. So you don't release the actual uh, you know, the, the available players because they're gonna be prepping and expecting that you got a, one certain type of roster, you come out with a different type of roster. Now in this age of gambling, is that findable? Absolutely. But when you're trying to get an edge in a playoff matchup, you do whatever it takes and you eat that fine. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay. I mean, you're being super newscaster-like, but I'm, I'm well, going to rock the breaking news? Yeah. Well, sort of. Is it? Maybe. It, uh, the playoffs have started, Charlotte. Back to okay. you. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, Embiid looked a little bit tired, but they still got that win. Let's head over to what you were saying is a playoff game that you were at last night. You went to a playoff game last night on That's April right. 2nd. That's right, Charlotte. Uh, the playoffs started. It happened in Miami last night. Heat versus Knicks. Hard-fought, slugfest of a game. The refs swallowed the whistles. Guys were fouling each other left and right. Nothing was getting called. Jalen Brunson had himself a tough night shooting the ball and a bunch of turnovers, even though he finished with a double-double, 20 points and 10 assists. Uh, Terry Rozier had perhaps his best game as a Miami Heat player. Kevin Love came back for the first time uh, for a month, I believe, off. And even though the Knicks were missing OG Ananobi and Julius Randle, of course, the Heat were missing Tyler Hero for a team that struggles to score points. That's huge for them, obviously. Uh, but again, the Heat prevailed. And I'll tell you something. The Knicks were, were executing down the stretch. It's just towards the end, they just had a couple of missteps. And the Heat came up victorious. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay, well, here's a question. If this this is a playoff game, Tibbs gave a playoff, a post-game playoff conference. But he appeared to malfunction? And you were there? He's getting fouled. 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 Okay. I mean, so here's a here's I, a, a real I question was there, for you. Charlotte. You know how you watch video on your phone and the little thing follows it along? I was like, did we already loop back to the beginning? Is this Tibbs on a loop? Did Tibbs play an April Fool's trick like you played on me yesterday? I like what's going on here? 
Charlotte, I was there in the press conference room. He'd been asked several other questions, and he answered them with the usual kind of gruff, tibs, straightforward uh, answers. And the question that actually inspired that answer was something along the lines of, Jalen Brunson had a tough night shooting tonight, a bunch of turnovers. What do you attribute that to? And Tibbs started with a very matter-of-fact answer. Well, he's not going to play perfect every night. Everyone has off nights. But even though he had an off night, he had 20 points and 10 assists, and we had a chance to win this game. So that's all you can really ask for, for guys to play hard. And he said, you look at the box score, and you see 10 free throw attempts. You like that. You think, okay, that's fine. Uh, but the reality is, and then that's where that he's getting foul part happens. So he starts saying it. And after the like, second or third time, I start looking around the room. I'm like, is, am I the only one that's experiencing this? Uh, am, I, am I having a stroke right now? Do I smell toast? And, and he just kept going. And then as soon as he was done, I heard PR say, thanks, coach, which is their code for it. There are no more questions because he's fallen off the deep end. And you know what? I don't blame them for being a little bit on the scary side. Back to you, Charlotte. Um, okay, I mean, so at this playoff game that you that you were at, Heat Knicks, mm-hmm. is this the Heat? Is this the start of the Heat being absolutely terrifying in the playoffs again? Then, by your logic, well, Charlotte, they're they're a game and a half ahead of the Sixers for the seven seed, the coveted seven seed in the play-in. But more importantly, they're a half game behind the Pacers for the six seed. They're only two games behind the Knicks and the Magic to get to five and four. Now, here's the important part to note, right? Even though there are two games back of the Knicks, the Knicks win the tiebreaker because they won the season series 2-1. But the Heat have the tiebreaker on on the Orlando Magic with three games to one. So if they can get up and pass the Pacers and tie with the Orlando Magic, they can occupy that spot. Also, looking backwards, the Sixers and the Heat have split the season series thus far, making Thursday night's matchup incredibly important because the winner of that not only gets a leg up in this race to get out of the play-in or as high as possible, but also wins the season series. Back to you, Charlotte. All right. Thank you, Amin, for this uh, incredible reporting about the playoffs that have apparently started, which brings me to the question, do you mean to tell me that Mm -hmm. the Nuggets, the Denver Nuggets, playing the San Antonio Spurs last night, where the Nuggets won 110 to 105 against the Spurs, who have been very bad all season, who are not in the playoffs. How on earth Mm. was that a playoff game? It was a playoffs. The Spurs made the playoffs last night. Now, they might get knocked out of the playoffs in 24 hours or so, but for the reality of last night, they were absolutely a playoff team, and that was a playoff game because here's the thing. What are the playoffs? The playoffs are hard fought. There's stakes involved, right? And there's star power where people step up. And I watched a game last night between the Nuggets and Spurs that had all of those things, right? The Nuggets, there were stakes involved. The Nuggets are clinging on to leading the Western Conference at one seed by a half game above Oklahoma City and Minnesota. At the same time, did the Stars show up? You're damn right. Nikola Jokic, 42 points, 16 rebounds, 6 dimes. And I believe like two or three dunks. What have you ever seen that? You know when you see it? In the playoffs, when you bring playoff intensity. And finally, Victor Wembanyama in his very first playoff game. What a performance. 23 points, 15 rebounds, 8 assists, 9 blocks, almost a a quadruple double. That is the second time this season he's had a 9-block game. He's only the second player in the last like 30 years to have done that. Alonzo Mourning was the other one. This absolutely was a playoff game, Charlotte. Back to you. Yeah, wow, look at that block. You got Wemby and Reggie Jackson there. Uh, Should the Nuggets be worried that it was more difficult to win this game than they thought it would be? Well, I think a lot of people are probably going to look at the box score and say, well, you know what, they they probably took it easy on this bad team, one of the worst teams in the league. Ladies and gentlemen, that's absolutely what did not what happened. Uh, Did not what happened. (laughs) Is not what happened. What happened was this Nuggets team that is Mm -hmm. destined for greatness, you get tested along the way in the playoffs and this is a young spurs team making its first playoff appearance trying to show that hey we belong and, and especially the star power victor and Benyama, he's comparing himself to the greatest big in the league excuse me the greatest player in our league which is Nikola Jokic. so yes you know you say on paper the nuggets should have won easily but no these are the playoffs and people bring their best performances back to you charlotte if this was the playoffs why didn't any team give out like shirts with dumb slogans on them I cannot confirm or deny whether there was a giveaway with shirts with dumb slogans, Charlotte. Uh, that would be something only someone who was at the game could confirm. I can confirm the game I went to the in Miami. There was no giveaway, but the fans 
bought the energy, playoff energy. And we got MVP chance for both Jimmy Butler and Jalen Brunson because half that arena were Nick fans. It was absolutely a bloodbath out there. It's exactly what the playoffs feel like. It was the playoffs. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay, it was the playoffs. Was it the playoffs when the Warriors beat the Mavs? This, this I actually, okay, all right. I'm starting to buy in. I mean, I'm starting to buy in. The Warriors, who are just like clawing for a play-in tournament spot, who are in one, but it's been shaky at times, and the Mavs, who have been just totally red hot, all of a sudden, what's going I don't know how to process this. Like, Draymond is flexing at the end of this. How did the Warriors beat the Mavs last night in this Draymond- playoff game? Draymond had and ones. He had incredible defensive plays at the rim. They were excellent. Steph did not have a great shooting night, but you know his presence on the floor always makes things difficult. This was an exciting game. It was a nip and tuck game. Uh, the, the Mavs were still in it all the way to the end. That hit, Kyrie hit a big three down the stretch, but unfortunately, too much Warriors, too little Mavs, and for the Warriors. This was huge because they won and the Rockets lost their playoff game. So that creates a little bit more distance and breathing room between 10 and 11 for the Warriors, keeping them safely within the play-in. For the Mavericks, hey, they they were a couple of days ago, we were talking about them winning their way and moving upwards, maybe even having home court advantage in the Western Conference playoffs. Now it's them and the Pelicans at the five and the six and that could go either way. The Clippers seem to be distancing themselves after they won last night. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay, so, you know, I am starting to buy into this. I mean, there was a lot of playoffs happening last night. And you know what Kyrie even said after the Warriors-Mavs game? It felt like kind of a playoff atmosphere tonight as well, the way we were going back and forth. So you're getting some support from the actual league here. Charlotte, I mean, you know why it felt like a playoff atmosphere? Because it was the playoffs? Because it was the playoffs. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay, early April playoffs, we love to see it. Here's another mm-hmm. weird playoff game. Uh, mm-hmm. The Wizards beat the dameless Milwaukee yep. Bucks. Wait, I'm sorry. Am I reading? Is that it? Hold on one second. Oh, no. That, it is confirmed that the Washington Wizards yep. beat the Bucks 117 yes. to 113. The Bucks That's now right. have a one and six record when Dame is out. Can you tell me about this playoff game, Amin? Yeah, so Giannis had a, an incredible game, 36 points, a zillion rebounds, a zillion assists, but it wasn't enough to beat the Wizards because it's the playoffs, and you can't underestimate your opponent. Once you're there, these teams are bringing everything they've got. We had an incredible performance by the Wizards in this game at, in our nation's capital, which hasn't hosted a playoff in quite a while, so you could tell that the fans were very excited and very into it. The Bucks without Damian Lillard, for all of the malignment he's received this season, Charlotte, they're one and six when he doesn't play. And that's big, because even though he hasn't been the Damian Lillard that we've grown to know and love over the years, he's still very instrumental to the success of this team here. But I digress. This was a massive playoff loss for the Bucks. They've got to get their together if they want to continue to live throughout the rest of these playoffs back to you charlotte okay so given that this was this was doc rivers first playoff loss in that case he now has 14 losses which is one more than head coach adrian griffin when he was fired what month was that i don't time is a social february. construct i mean it was february. It was does this all-star. spell does this spell trouble for the for the bucks and doc rivers well, I don't think as a as a comparison to Adrian Griffin, again, as we've talked about a lot, like the guys were not confident in their roles playing for Coach Griffin. That's not a, I mean, it is a kind of knock on him. He, he lost their confidence, but that's not a death sentence. But it is what it is. Doc Rivers is not expected to fix everything overnight, but the idea is that when the playoffs start, that they're going to have their shit together. They didn't have their shit together last night, Charlotte, so they lost. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay, I mean, uh, one last play. No, there's no way. There's no way that What's the that? Toronto Raptors. You're telling me the Toronto every Raptors game, who have now every lost. Every game was a playoff game yesterday, Charlotte. Every game was a playoff game. The Toronto Raptors who have lost 14 in a row and the Lakers, that was a playoff game? Okay, that one wasn't a playoff game. That, okay, that, that one was exhibition. But it was a fun exhibition game. We got a cool dunk from Jackson Hayes. Landed on his back. He's all right, though. He's all right, though. Oddball. He's all right, though. Welcome back to Oddball. Amin, we're going to do a new segment today. Are you ready? I'm ready. 
We're calling it oddest take, which is not to be confused with hottest take, but oddest, like the name of the show. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're, because we're a fun sports show, we're not like other sports shows. We're going to see, we're going to see what the lower thirds are that, um, our producers have come up with that we could talk about that other sports shows probably are talking about until we get to one that we want to talk about. Should we start? Yeah. Yeah. Lower third for those that are not uh, vested into TV parlance is basically just a topic bar. It tells you, you know, like Draymond Green to kill again, question mark. Like that's, that's what your lower third is. Yeah, it's where you see the part that says more therapy. Um, yep. So we're going to start because uh, LeBron and the Lakers take on the Washington Wizards tonight. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's see what our options okay. are. LeBron passes MJ in 30-point games. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, that's, we, it's all set in the headline right there. Will LeBron retire this offseason? Uh, this is the part of LeBron's career I do not want to be around for, which is where we speculate every year if he's going to retire. Get yeah, it out of here. That's a problem with being old. Uh, will Bronny declare for the draft? Ugh, a Bronny headline. I mean. I, I've got to respect LeBron's wishes. Let's let him be kids, even though he's the one that said he's better than a lot of guys in the NBA right now. Okay, what else do we have? March sadness. Who's the saddest NBA team? I think this is in honor of the Washington Wizards. Um, do we have a bracket? We need a bracket for this. Okay, so no, we've got the, the Wizards against the Hornets, and then the Pistons against the Nets on the other side of the bracket. I mean, we're, start start on the East. Start on the the Wizards. I just want to point out that somewhere the Toronto Raptors are skipping the NIT sadness. <laughs> in protest because they didn't make it they've lost a million games in a row but uh i'm gonna go with in the east or on the left side of the bracket i guess because they're all eastern teams look i know what you're thinking like the charlotte hornets this team is struggling steve clifford said at the beginning of the year oh it's the most talented group i've ever had and this is what it comes out to but i'm gonna go with the wizards uh, you gotta watch jordan pool play every night after everyone told you that Jordan Poole just needed to change the scenery, and it turns out, no, he's a lot worse than we even originally thought. Turns out Amin was right, which is not something I say lightly. Uh, okay, so on the other side of the bracket, we've got Pistons, net. well, this Pistons Nets. I mean, Pistons anybody. It's the Pistons, right? It's a blowout. This is a blowout. This okay. Is, this is, <laughs> this, is, this was not a fun, imagine. yeah, this wasn't fun to watch. So we've got Washington versus uh brooklyn i mean versus detroit who who wins is it detroit weren't they just like the saddest team all season no i think everyone's gonna say oh it's detroit they had the the league record for most consecutive losses you got monty williams complaining about the new york media out of the blue and stuff but here's the thing you got kate cunningham you got Jaden ivy you got asara thompson those are three pretty good young players that you can look forward to in a couple of years what do the wizards have to look forward to the uh, no, man, no, it's, it, this is definitely the Wizards, the saddest team in the NBA. All right, you heard it here first. March Sadness winner, Washington Wizards, who will stay in D.C. That's their silver lining. Okay, what do we have next? Uh, tonight, Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns play Cleveland. On Monday, he put up his third straight 50-point game against New Orleans. So let's see what these, these talking point options are. Mm. Phoenix more likely to win title or lose play in get out of here that's actually not a bad topic but if you don't like it I don't like it either it's just a lot of math who has Booker <laughs> been torching that says what? why is not who is Booker been torching it's why has Booker oh. been torching New Orleans well yeah. I can't even read it so maybe yeah. I don't want to talk about it yeah torch that topic well Booker stay in Phoenix I mean oh that's juicy that's got some spice to it, but I feel like a riverboat gambler. Give me something else. What do we got? Okay. Who would you rather give all your money to, Dan Gilbert or Matt Ishbia? Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cleveland Cavs. Matt Ishbia, the new owner of the Phoenix Suns. I mean, they're both in the mortgage business. You've got yes. United Wholesale Mortgage on Ishbia's side, and you've got Rocket Mortgage on Gilbert's. Is this the most depressing lower third you've ever seen? The, yeah, and, and it's funny because they openly hate each other. That That's what makes this another level. I can't imagine. It, it would be like, because I'm not, most people don't know anything about mortgages and who sells them and who originates them and all that stuff. But imagine if 
Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg both own NBA teams. Oh God! Like it's that kind of open conflict between these two guys. Um, who would I rather give my money to in a in a, in a mortgage? Oh, For man. context, it turns out, according to Paolo Torre, finds out that uh, United Wholesale Mortgage has been having brokers funnel business to them, even if they do not have the best rates that the client of these brokers could get. So, uh, but also then Dan Gilbert wrote a statement in Comic Sans. So it, it feels like neither. Lose, lose proposition, Charlotte. Lose, lose. Also, it made, I went into a deep dive about what uh, NBA owners do. It's all private equity, real estate. And then like, you've got the weird ones like the car dealerships and cruise ships. That's from another time. Yeah. That's another time. Okay, the Celtics tonight face off against the Thunder. Uh, okay. okay, let's see what we're what? what was that? You're supposed to be excited. It's a big game. I know, but it's scary because the Thunder are good. Okay, is this the best Tatum Celtics team yet? Boring. No, thanks. Should other teams copy how Oklahoma City has built their team? How have Absolutely. they built their team? Yeah, yeah. Be terrible for a hundred years in a row, and then at some point it works out. Okay, Great. yeah. Skip it. Who wins? Twenty twelve OKC or twenty twenty four OKC? I mean, I love, I love this topic. I love it. Can we stay on this topic? Yeah. I, I want to stay on this topic. I think twenty twelve OKC destroys them. They literally had three MVPs. Yeah. Three. Can you Durant, remind our Westbrook, viewers? That, yeah. Yeah. Durant Westbrook and James Harden were all future MVPs. And then you, the other guys were like Serge Ibaka and uh, Kendrick Perkins, two of the better defensive players of the last decade. Yeah. I'm easily taking 2012 over 2024. Even with Shea and Chet? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've settled that. Uh, what was the last time? I just, just wanted out of curiosity. What? What was the last topic out of curiosity? Oh, oh yeah. That would have been a good one, too. How does Gordon Hayward feel about this game? Uh, I am very invested in how he feels about this game. Probably bad and also good because he got a lot of money out of the Boston Celtics. A lot of money. Um. All right. So the women's tournament, uh, the final four is coming up this weekend. Let's see what our first our first option here is. Is Caitlin Clark the most entertaining athlete alive? I mean, the answer is no. <laughs> no. Topic answered. All right, next. Oh my God. Okay, she got astray. Best new meme. Uh, this is referring to Haley Van Lith shrugging, which I felt bad about because she was sick and she's been standing up for her teammates. And Why is she, she took a lot of heat. Why is she going the best player in the sport then? Well, I, that's I, a Kim Mulkey question, isn't it? What? Oh, what do we have here? This meme, NBA defenders, Caruso hearing sandstorm. <laughs> uh, <gasps> okay, uh, next song. one, next topic, next bar. Biggest trash talk backfire. I mean, what is this one about? I did, okay, so, right. Uh, apparently, Angel Reese has been wearing a crown in player intros throughout the tournament. And what she's been doing is when she shows up to the arena, she puts the crown on the bench. And so uh, on Monday night, while Caitlin Clark was warming up pregame, Angel Reese walks in and puts the crown on the bench right in front of where Caitlin Clark is warming up. And so I just felt like, look, I know that must rattle some opponents. You have to know it wouldn't rattle her. And then what we got was 41 and 12 in, a, in, in the go-ahead game. So uh, this is pretty bad, but I want to run some of the other pretty bad ones in recent history. We've got, let's see what we got here. Uh, Apollo Creed is on here. Oh, yeah. That wasn't recent history. RIP to the great Carl Weathers. But yeah, Apollo Creed came out dressed head to toe like the USA flag and to James Brown living in America. That wasn't good. That 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 pissed off Drago, I think. I also uh, thought from the finals last year, when, I mean, the Eastern Conference finals, that's a Freudian slip. When uh, Grant Williams talked trash to Jimmy Butler, that, that worked out well for everybody. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is a good one. I forgot about that one. How about Nick Anderson in 1995 declaring that number 45 is not number 23, referring to Michael Jordan, who then came back wearing 23 and destroyed them in the next game? Hard to argue with. Hey, <laughs> oh, hey, hey. <laughs> Viral decontextualization. Uh, Haley Van Lith, yeah. call the law offices of Amin Al Hassan right be now. Be respectful. Be, be respectful. 